Hello and welcome to the Newgen webinar Transforming Finance with AI Powered Digital Lending Ecosystem. I am Mukul and shall be your host and the moderator for this webinar. I thank you all for taking time to join us today. The response has been overwhelming and we are excited to talk about the need of transforming finance with a touch of AI. Today with, we have Chetan Parikh from Sedar Management Consulting. He is managing partner, Mina Region FinTech Practice. Chetan is a global thought leader and has over 22 years of experience. He has worked on various assignments in the areas of digital, transaction banking, digital banking, digital innovation, transformation, core banking and re-platforming across the industries in US, UK, Asia, and Middle East geographies. We also have our co-presenter Kaushal Verma from Eugen. He is head of global banking practice. With 19 plus years of experience in BFSI industry, Kaushal has created digital products, digital transformation of processes and customer journey and experience market facing strategies to serve Fortune 500 clients. I welcome both our panelists. While Chetan will take us through the emerging trends of digital lending in the Middle East, Kaushal will deep dive into the need of digital transformation among financial institutions. At the end of the presentation, we will conduct a Q&A session. We request you to type your questions in the question window of a go-to meeting anytime during the webinar and our experts will address them at the end of the session. Without further ado, I invite Chetan to take us through his part. Thank you so much, Mukul. Uh, I hope you can see my screen and hear me well. So we are here to discuss the role of artificial intelligence in digital lending. Uh, just a quick, uh, it's a practitioner's view and advisor's view. I've been advisor to little over 50 companies. And these are NBFCs, banks, lending institutions. And it's been an interesting journey over the last two decades uh, to help go from uh, and offering uh, advice around what's coming next. So let's first start with understanding what is digital lending and how AI can help. So digital lending is nothing but moving the lending onto digital platforms which we use in our life. As all of you know, mobile is the biggest device we use along with tablets, portals, and laptops, right? So lending, which is provisioned onto customer devices of their preference, and using advanced AI enabled analytics and automated processes to deliver experience, which is quick and efficient. So how does one do about it? So if you look at the data, which financial institutions have around customer or prospect, analyzing that and offering a lending on the spot, it could be at a point of sale, it could be on third party merchants websites. So analyzing data and putting through algorithm a lending opportunity, then scoring the customer through AI algorithms, which is second uh, material point and automating the whole experience of uploading the documents, verifying the authenticity of the documents, loan servicing once the customer is booked onto the lending system, or converting the lead, which could have been through social media, different mechanisms, using alternative data to score customers beyond his salary and income proofs, and finally delivering the whole experience digitally through portals, mobile devices, chatbots, virtual assistant, and conducting the transactions through voice rather than RM and a branch customer service representative. 
so that's what an ai enabled digital lending looks like now let's understand why there is a need for change so traditionally digital lending has been through forms through branches through dsas through rms and this is a slow process where decisioning takes up to a week sometimes more in case of home finance there's a lot of documents incentive there is back and forth between financial institution and the customer an extensive manual intervention which creates multiple point of failures and last but not the least the regulatory compliance are huge what a good process looks like is minimal customer time with the bank devices process which is streamlined and works like clockwork complete visibility on the loan life cycle where the application is where the loan is what's approval terms in a very transparent way and a very hyper personalized journey uh, which is provided to customer it could be different for a student different for a teen different for a generation z and a generation m and a different for an sme or a corporate so that's what a good looks like now globally it's a huge market from 11.5 billion in size end of this year to tripling to 46.5 billion by 2030 and the market is growing at 22% with respect to digital lending mainly driven by new generation devices higher penetration of smartphones a changing generation z and a generation m behavior and surging growth of lending analytics we have much more data points now to analyze and offer lending than what we ever imagined and last but not the least both big data and ai is powering ability of financial institutions to drive the lending now when you look at the lending life cycle today in amina region self onboarding there is minimal use today on self onboarding there is hardly any banks and nbfcs who offer ai based onboarding there is hardly any end to end automation most of the even mobile banking apps are paper drop at the back there is no real instant financing which is driven by customer self service second if you are entering a service center or meeting an rm who is coming to your home it's an assisted onboarding and again turnaround times are high bureau is not online our uh, customer experience is not straight through and customer is largely inconvenienced when you look at credit scoring lack of holistic data on credit scoring some markets like uae are much better prepared they have a bureau which is online real time accuracy is guaranteed but when you go to other markets in gcc uh, oman and all there are still bureaus are getting set up their apis are still not fully available you go to saudi arabia there is a whole framework available now thanks to government regulation change in a complex and lengthy decisioning process you look at sanctioning again manual look at the documents uploaded documents you're not sure really document is authentic lot of citing of real documents and a low automation on data inaccuracies dashboard and reporting wise again there is no comprehensive risk reporting for multi obligor situations uh, in case husband and wife coming and applying together in case two directors applying together and a 360 degree view of the lending is not available uh, you don't know real life exposure with other lending organizations in the country so series of challenges today across different markets however this can be solved using banking architecture and apis ai can be enabled in multiple ways so when you look at a typical banking architecture where there is a channel layer there is a microservices layer there is a servicing layer 
So right from a servicing layer, enabling CRM and creating a 360 degree view, sourcing the right data from bureau as well as internal historical analytics, customer experience platform, which is low code one, which is available built by financial services. A lot of onboarding apps built using the platforms. Integrated business process management layer. A rules engine at middle office around criteria using alternate data to create a full picture and an AI enabled algorithm decision making. Which enables you to book a real time contract in the product factory in the lawn management system and then followed by analytics BI and rules engine components. So these are material changes our financial institution needs to make in end to end life cycle of lending. Now what's changing in technology trends are four major things. First low code enterprise needs to have a low code mobile application development toolkit and a BPM platform which is available and allowing you to automate the complete journey and change the journey as per the need of the segment because you launch 1.0 and there is learnings then you make 2.0 so it's very much an agile build second bring AI in chatbots virtual assistants so you have an intelligent response and hyper personalization you're not really uh, having a standard response third bring AI enabled rules engine or uh, to really provide and product customer behavior and respond and last but not the least uh, big data and alternate data to provide a very clear lending scorecards not only financial but behavioral so that you can take instant decisioning so these are four things which is changing from technology perspective and when i say low code we are looking at low code front to back so front office middle office and back office end to end being enabled right from a mobile device to line of business across personal finance home finance auto finance and any smart lending on the point of sale or even business banking lending and going all the way at the back so that's where low code ai driven platform helps and there are banks who are implementing this so this is not really a bookish or theory i mean it's nbd one of the leaders in the uae market has implemented complete digital lending on their new generation platform called live qatar qib mashrak neo al salam bank in bahrain al raji in saudi arabia nbk in kuwait have all implemented advanced lending some are certain use case enable some are still moving up fab which is one of the, my co speakers is also have implemented on commercial lending side a similar experience some of the notable use cases is adcb on how they have done corporate lending for sme how commercial bank of dubai has implemented digital innovation on rpas and the whole lending experience is on their mobile and tablets to a QNB who has enabled AI on chatbots and improving the alternate data in decisioning. So what does a future looks like on AI enabled lending? So it is AI powered personalization where main role of AI is to do much better analytics than what banking RMs and credit analysts did. A pure mobile first approach because mobile still has almost 90% plus penetration compared to other devices a highly secured experience because of large fraud risk moment you launch digital lending a faster instant approvals so we are talking about lending in minutes not in days a data driven decisioning rather than people driven decisioning and a sustainable finance from the way so that's what the future looks like and AI plays a huge role in personalization. 
in automated the decisioning and workflow verifying the document is authentic reducing the fraud predicting which is the next customer who will buy it and what's the skip in case customer is an existing customer scoring the credit through automated rules engine building efficiency and cost reductions and making it secured from a regulator perspective now natural question will be what should bank do first and the foremost invest into a ai digital platform which is low code and enabled by ai engines right now we are generation 2 predictive ai it's very soon going to be generation 3 and 4 coming in in next 12 to 18 months build an ecosystem so you are not doing an los digitally but lms is manual no it's end to end integrated ecosystem with fintechs included use of alternate data using big data and ai technologies to create a 360 degree view for credit decisioning and last but not the least start building historical warehouse on which ai algorithm works you minimum need 12 to 18 months history if it's an existing customer so that's where you see a huge 25 to 26 percent growth or uh, that's it from my side feel free to ask mukul can you confirm uh, you can see the slides yes please go ahead kaushal thank you so thanks again chetan you know for you know as i said bringing perspective to the whole discussion and uh, you know uh, taking us through the market trends as well as the challenges uh, my focus would be to you know what are the key ingredients to make it run and uh, you know as i said at the run time what all is required to make this happen for a financial institution so you know uh, if we if we start with uh, nugens digital lending platform what are the key differentiators so you know nugen is they are having successful implementations across the globe with 250 plus banks and nbfcs it's a very very robust and scalable platform uh, with uh, you know some of the financial institutions having more than 10000 branches in india where this digital platform is uh, live and running um, not only this you know uh, around 80 to 85% of customer journeys and the product journeys are built into the platform which actually helps us to uh, increase the time to market and reduce the overall delivery timelines by 33% that is what we have said um, and on top of that you know the most important thing is that it's a true low code platform and since you mentioned that you know the the importance of a true low code platform we have to look at each customer interaction from a uh, you know from a journey perspective whether it's a new to bank customer whether it's an existing to bank customer you know and then with ai coming in you know what to sell what is the next best course of action so all of those that you know hyper personalized journeys have to be brought in on a true low code platform which is highly configurable which can manage all these journeys and you know create multiple versions around that to in a continuously evolve the customer experience so it's not you know the go live is not the end with with true low code platforms go live is just the beginning how quickly you can translate the next big thing which is coming to the market to always remain ahead of the competition is going to the, uh, be the key factor in this race so you know as i told you it's a very robust platform uh, if i talk about uh, let me just bring in my pointers so that i can so you know uh, and and the best part is with newgen you know you get the complete ecosystem built into the platform you know we have 140 plus integrations across the globe uh, these are adapters with bureaus crms core banking systems loan management systems kyc due diligence income analysis now all these are key factors you know to enable a digital journey as well as you know having pre built ai ml models for you know on our low code platform also really adds a lot of value in terms of hyper personalized journeys whom to sell what to sell what time to sell what is the next best course of action so whether it's your customer acquisition whether it's your customer retention whether it's the risk decisioning or fraud detection you know 
we have models which can be recalibrated on a financial institution's data. Uh, you know, we just have to plug in the their data warehouse and the corresponding data within our AI platform, and you know, we can recalibrate the models then and there itself. That's the key. So, you know, going ahead, it's a single unified platform, enables contactless journeys, personalized journeys, anytime, anywhere, which is a theme with the digital learning platform. And, you know, it helps to minimize the data entry uh, for the end customers, because that is the key. We are, while we are going digital, we should not uh, make the customer get old and with the amount of data that he has to enter on behalf of the, uh, you know, a financial institution. So the whole idea is to make it as minimum clicks as it could be through, you know, the digital uh, lending platform. So going ahead, you know, uh, before I move on to the next slide, I just wanted to share the experience region has got uh, across, uh, you know, the GCC region. So some of the largest names are already utilizing the platform for very use cases. So Al Raji Bank is, is right at the top for digital lending platform where they have done some straight through journeys with us. Early United Bank, Fab is our, uh, you know, co-speaker today and uh, Mr. Salil will also throw some light on what they have done uh, on this platform itself. Then talking about Fab Miss is also adopting the same platform, Rack Bank, National Bank of Kuwait, Qatar National Bank, Bank Muscat, Mashrak Bank, ADCB. So, you know, and then not this, you know, Tajir Finance, ALJ Finance. So NBFC have also realized that there is no second thought before moving out on a framework based approach rather than a, you know, a monolithic application based approach because agility is going to be the key going forward. You know, while you are doing all these experiments, you will always have the need to make changes as per the, you know, regulatory compliance or as per the competitive nature of the market. So, you know, you should be sitting on a very, very configurable platform that enables you to make changes at your own will rather than getting bogged down by the application or the hard codedness of the application, right? So, if I go now into the AI, you know, this is what do, uh, you know, we offer. So, let's assume that this is your current landscape. So, you might be having a loan origination platform, you might be having a loan servicing platform, or you might be having a collections platform. And then there are multiple channels, you know, which you have on top of that. How Nugent's AI driven to be landscape, which is powered by our AI platform, can make your intelligent, uh, you know, lending intelligent it can actually help you at the complete lending life cycle level. So whether it's the customer acquisition part where, you know, we can look at your data, your E2B customers and create pre-approved offers. We can also define, you know, the cross-sell and upsell offers for your existing new bank customers as well, as well as the new to bank customers. Because the real-time algorithms are getting data from various data aggregators nowadays or the bank statement analysis enables us to do this for new to bank customers also. So there are some very unique and innovative use cases that we have implemented around customer acquisition. This is where customer is coming to the financial institution uh, through the choice of channel. It could be a mobile device, it could be a tablet, it could be a desktop or walking into the branch. He will have a same level of experience on this digital lending platform. So this would help you to have higher lead generation, increase in market share. And once it comes to the back office, you know, we have done varied use cases for underwriting where credit risk assessment and, you know, uh, defining the weights for the scorecards, what are the important parameters to look at. Now, I will go deep into the factors that we have considered with one of these uh, models. So, so that you can relate with it. Then you know, the credit decisioning part as well. It can also look at, you know, your previous cases which have been approved and convert a new case into a STP. So AI is now moving towards a direction where underwriters job would get, you know, to manage exceptions, to manage deviations. Everything else will be popped out as a part of the AI decisioning engine. So that's something which we will talk about going forward. And once the loan is booked, you know, if in case delinquency happens, you know, it can actually help you to enhance your uh, delinquency management and the collection efforts as well. 
So, you know, accurately identify possible delinquencies and defaults. This is an early warning signal kind of a scenario I'm talking here. And based on the behavioral model, it can also auto correct some of the cases to which you should not, you know, send dunning letters or should not send, uh, you know, some uh, emails, reminders, because a model can tell that they will auto correct themselves within a time frame. So that actually enhances your customer experience to the next level. And this entire platform is, you know, uh, comes up with data integrity built into the platform so that you don't have any bias. Fairness is, is in the, an integral pillar of this platform. It also gives you explainability why the model is turning towards a specific you know, outcome. It will give you complete explainability with complete documentation of the model. And it's a very, very resilient, you know, <clears throat> architecture. It's built on a very, very, and this entire thing will then be integrated with your core banking, risk rating engines, CRMs, and other third party engines. So, you know, where you have already made investments, we can leverage them as a part of your, you know, overall implementation plan. So if I move ahead, you know, this is the model of engagement that we adopt with the customers. So we, we have subject matter experts who give advisory services for data source, data sets, and identification of the features based on the scope that we undertake, right? So there are various set of uh, features that we can provide you through pre-built models that we need this much of data for last three years or at least for last 18 months. So, so that you can make that data available to us. Then we sanitize the data to make it ready for modeling, right? And all of this is completely automated. It's a low-code AI platform. We just have to plug the data pipeline onto this platform. You know, from step two to step six, six everything is automated. So you, you know why this is so important? Because this makes it a factory model for AI models. You define a model today, you will have to recalibrate that model every quarter at max, you know. So, so you know, rather than experimenting on open technologies, you should adopt a platform or an enterprise grade approach, which is very critical to ensure that, you know, it becomes a factory model and, sorry. Sorry, yeah. And it keeps, evolving over a period of time because you know recalibration and machine learning operations are going to be the most important thing you know otherwise you know what has happened in the last six months will never get translated into your model so you know that part we have to be wary of so it automate it, it completely automates your data preparation through pre-built data connectors for faster data integration exploration of data is also automated to take out the features which are very critical for that particular use case. Then you have the feature engineering. Then you, you know, it automatically builds and trains the model. Now, this is where, you know, you see automated data science. Auto selects the best modeling algorithms based on the back testing that is performed on the uh, test data. So let's say you give me data for three years. I will take six months data as my test data. So once my model tells me that this particular customer is going to defer, I will cross verify that with my test data to ensure that, you know, whether the model prediction is fine. So based on all that, it automatically selects the champion and challenger models. And it will give you thorough explanation around that why I'm picking this one as a champion model. So all of that is built into the platform. You don't have to struggle with uh, you know, open data sources or open technologies to keep experimenting on this. This is completely automated end to end in a factory model, right? This helps you to have faster go time to market, uh, intelligent lending journeys, reduce cost of ownership because you can, uh, you know, bring in a on-premise or a cloud deployment. No additional cost is required as a part of the digital lending platform always up for data insights and you can always leverage existing portals that you already have and make them intelligent and hyper personalized 
So what we have seen, uh, you know, as an outcome uh, of, of these initiatives is at the acquisition level, uh, you know, where we have done pre-approved offers, we have seen 28% increase in business, you know, through pre-approved offers, cross-sell, upsell modeling that we have done and invite them into our very lean customer journeys. You know, three-click pre-approved personal loan or a pre-approved business loan or a you know, cash flow based financing, uh, where we have done, we have seen tremendous amount of uh, penetration as well as adoption. You know, this is a unique use case, loan do not take up. See, you do all the hard work and if customer doesn't get it, uh, you know, disbursed from you, you sanction the loan, you, do, you have done the complete hard work, right? And then customer says, uh, you know, look, I would like to go to another bank to take up or, or a financial institution to take up this product because of so-and-so reason. So this is a model which helps you to define what is the probability of this customer actually getting it disbursed from you. And if the probability is less, how can it can, it will also give you those inputs to improve on the factors like pricing, tenor, terms and conditions to convert your non-take up to take up. So this is a very peculiar use case that we have done for one of the banks in uh, Africa right now. And this is being done with a couple of banks in Saudi right now as well. So, and then if I move on to the customer risk segmentation, you know, as a part of trade risk assessment, you can see, you know, there is 32% reduction in turnaround time. Low touch SKP, this is uh, the new use case that we have implemented where I was telling you that based on if the uh, deviations are within the threshold, which have been approved in the recent past, AI will automatically take decision and give reference to the underwriter and the sanctioning authority so that they can approve the case on a single click. So that redu reduces your turnaround time by 14%. Then uh, loan default prediction. This is a classical use case where we define what happens, you know, with this new loan based on the historical delinquency patterns. Uh, in the financial institution. And then, you know, how we can improve your uh, collection efforts as a part of collection activities and strategy to maximize daily collections. How can you, you know, increase your potential to collect as an organization? So there are custom treatment uh, strategy based on the scoring, the AI based scoring that we do for each customer, capacity, budget planning, including collective incentive forecast, all of that is built as a model, you know, in this AI engine. So it's an end-to-end -end AI enabled loan life cycle that we can help you with. So uh, just to give you a glimpse, you know, these are the inputs that we may require from you to de define a default prediction model, wherein the number of days passed, due credit score, number of times, uh, you know, the limit has revolved in the past, line utilization percentage, debt to income ratio, risk on other products. So these are the parameters, you know, sometimes we look into and you know, this, this is the solution that we uh, do, you know, so as a part of my automated data science platform, it will run various algorithms like machine learning, GBM, SVM and logistic regression and the outcome that you get is the propensity model. What is the probability of default for a customer of doing a default 0.93%, 55%, 18%, you know, so all of this is then exposed as an API, which can be consumed by any channel, can be consumed by any LOS platform, right? So this is the complete glimpse of our model. Now, if I look at the complete digital lending platform that Nugen offers in totality, where AI plays a very, very important role, but you know, if, if I look at the complete system, you know, uh, this is what we offer. We have complete set of channels which are uh, built into the platform as a part of local code platform. You know, we have omni channel engagement for the end customers, no matter where they are coming from. Uh, it can, it has solutions for all the lines of businesses, whether it's your retail site solutions, whether it's business banking, that means SME or large corporates. And we do complete set of lending in whether, uh, you know, in conventional mode or in Islamic mode. Under Islamic, we have all the modes of finance that you might be uh, having as a part of your, you know, Muraba, Ijara, Tawarruk, Istinia, whatever, you know, uh, is the mode of finance is already configured. And this entire platform is built on a low code process automation platform, which is very highly rated by Gartners and Foresters uh, of the, you know, uh, for, for 
complex process automation, digital process automation, and wherever there is a document intensive process automation, we have been rated, you know, even higher than some of the most established uh, players in this market. So, you know, it, it helps you to have the complete process orchestration layer. That means your uh, workflows are completely configurable. You are a form builder. That means, you know, the device agnostic HTML5 forms can be generated on this platform, which are device agnostic. The complete business rule engine. This is where your entire eligibility rules, your risk based scorecards, your AI ML based weights reside and your complete deviation and approval authority matrix resides here. So we decouple the entire complexity of credit policy and keep it in a very, very simple way in the BRE so that the business users themselves can make changes into the credit policy rather than being dependent on the uh, IT. So and then for the freedom to parameterize, we have master data management. This is where you can define and you know your charges, your product masters, your scheme masters, as well as you know your end to end configuration of schemes. Then your reports and dashboards, you know, as a standard part of the product, you get around 30 to 40 reports, but you can again, it's a representation layer. If you know the schema, you can generate any amount of reports on uh, with this tool, which is called business activity monitoring. Last but not the least is the AI ML engine. As we discussed in our previous slides, you know how it is adding a lot of value to the customer engagement journeys, to the risk management, as well as to the collection efforts. And this entire platforms, you know, once it comes together, uh, you know, it is tightly integrated with your bureaus, KYC, blacklist, open banking APIs to fetch the account statements from the central bank sources or from another bank your customer relationship management in case of drop-offs or getting a leap from them, payment gateways to make the initial payments, uh, you know, the processing fees and all, data aggregators and other systems, you know. So it's a complete set of automated platform that you get uh, out of the box. We only do configurations through our low-code platform to make sure it matches 100% of your requirements as well as the nuances and SOPs of your financial institution. On the left side, these are incumbent solutions within the bank or a financial institution where you can see it in NBFCs, we generally uh, tend to integrate or we replace the LMS solution as well because we have our own LMS all as well. In banks, we generally tend to integrate with the core banking application. Then we have inventory management, credit card management solution in case you're doing a credit card journey code uh, GL and limit management modules. So these are, this is the complete landscape of uh, the digital lending platform. And we have complete, as I told you in my last slide, you know, we have complete set of, uh, you know, lending life cycle management, whether it's the origination part, right from initiation till disbursement or loan management part, where you have complete support for mobile, for request servicing portals, disbursals, you have customer 360 degree views, uh, you know, collection and payment receipts, so, uh, statement of accounts, everything is built in into the loan management platform as well. It is live in around, you know, 40, 45 plus NBFCs at this point of time. And the collection part where, you, you know, you have uh, mobile based collections as well, where your RM can go to the customer premise and collect the money on your behalf. So there are, you know, very rich features uh, around this. It, can, it goes up to legal, uh, you know, management, reposition, broken uh, promise to pay, and and uh, the, again, you know, customer 360 degree view is an integral part of the, the collection engine as well. So, you know, now I'll be more, uh, I just wanted to give you a glimpse of uh, what we are doing uh, for GCC and, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia specifically. So, you know, this is the ecosystem that we come up with. We have integration adapters, which are built into this platform, for initiation, you know, we are utilizing all these touch points that you see on the left side, Saudi Post, Bayan, Yakin, Rayan. So the, this is the ecosystem that government has come up with and we are able to utilize them as a part of our digital lending journeys to make them straight through. And that is a whole premise, you know, because uh, that is where the actual value of digital lending platform and AI enabled digital lending platform lies. 
and for credit you know we uh, sima is has come up with queen where you get the complete set of financials as well earlier you used to only get the individual and corporate scores and their uh, you know liabilities that they're enjoying with other institutions but now it is much more than that again then payan credit payan financial dv360 at the time of execution now to make it straight through even the commodity buying and selling is automated so this is the level of depth that we have uh, you know as a part of the entire digital lending platform that we're talking here to make it completely straight through you know we don't want the customer to feel that you know uh, the time to yes and the time to cash is instant basically in some journeys if the time to yes is instant time to cash could be let's say 20 minutes to two hours or it could be one business day because you need a back office checking uh, for that particular product line right you you might want to do a third party appraisal or you want to, you might want to do a uh, you know a collateral valuation or a legal assessment of the collateral so so for that you might have to wait but the rest of the processing is completely straight through with having all these integrations you know built into the platform and this platform is tightly integrated with Terminos, T24, Jack Henry, Finical, Oracle FlexCube, uh, you know, uh, and then on the other side, 10 plus leading ERP and CRMs and the core GLs of Microsoft Dynamics, SAP, Oracle, JD Edwards. So all of these are readily available systems. Now this gives you a jump start. Why I'm focusing on this is that, you know, if you want to adopt a solution which has the complete ecosystem building, you just have to look at automating your SOPs. Rest, everything is available in one box and you can actually take it and start using it once you automate your uh, standard operating procedures on the system. So uh, as I was explaining, you know, the lending journey will have ETB, NTB, finance amount, whether it's individual customer, non-individual, where, you know, multiple journeys get automatically created as a part of the digital lending platform. Then there are various parameters on the basis of which our BRE decides whether it's a straight through case in which the disbursement can happen within seven to 10 minutes. It, whether it's a near STP case, that means, you know, 20 minutes to two hours, or is it a non STP case where you might need one business day to seven business days, depending on whether it's a business banking case or a large corporate where you might have to do a lot of other assessments as well. So the whole idea is to holistically look at every finance journey and categorize them into straight through, then near straight through, and then assess it. And you know, with this platform, which is very robust and with AI coming in and automatically judging whether it's a STP or a non-STP, you know, it's, it's a dream come true for, uh, you know, the financial institutions and, you know, it's uh, you get best of both the worlds. You're buying something which is as good as a, you know, off the shelf kind of a product, but you can configure to meet 100% of your requirements. So moving ahead, you know, uh, this is a journey that we have made live, uh, you know, which is POS finance digital journey. It's a complete straight through processing that we have done in Saudi market. It's a completely omni channel. That means it runs on all the devices. It's completely device agnostic. Dropout journey, if customer drops out at any given point of time, he can resume the journey through a small bit URL that system provides to the customer. After authentication, they can start from there itself. It's a completely contactless. That means the customer doesn't go to the bank, doesn't go to the branch, doesn't visit anywhere. They can do it from the comfort of their home. And, you know, it again, it helps to automate new to bank, existing to bank customers and completely straight through. I'll not go deep into this, but just wanted to show you the, uh, you know, an overview that we are starting with customer authentication and we are finishing at contracting and disbursement where e-sign is, is happening and DocuSign and code banking posting is happening there itself. There are some integrations like, you know, Nafith is being used for contract signing, broker API for buying and selling commodities, account aggregators. This is where the BRE is coming to the picture to compute the eligible limit this is the limit eligibility calculation, industry type. So there are various parameters on the basis of which we are defining all this, right? And then we are doing thorough due diligence through credit bureaus as well as the knockoff criteria. 
whether it's an existing customer, are they doing POS with us for more than six months, number of years uh, into the business is greater than two, is there a duplicate check that is happening, you know, is it an existing customer or not, or a duplicate case is going on, right? So all of that is happening as a part of straight through journeys that we're talking about here. So as a part of this, you know, what you can expect from this application or this platform is, you know, at three levers. You, you know, you can look at number of cases processed per week, average ticket size, onboarding through self-service portal, what is the fallout rate, what is the pull-through rate. So if you see, you know, these are the factors which will help you to analyze your business expansion. Then these are the factors which helps you to judge whether my customer experience has enhanced. What is the digital channel conversion? What is the digital channel throughput? You know, are there any dropouts that are happening within the application, reduced fallout rates, less abundant journeys? And then, you know, if I talk about the turnaround time, what is what was the average cycle time? Was it seven days and we have reduced it to one day or was it 80 minutes and we have reduced it to 10 minutes or 12 minutes? Right. So these are the levers that you get as a standard dashboard, uh, you know, from the system, from the digital learning platform. And these are some benefits for the customer that you can envisage, uh, you know, no touch, low touch uh, customer journeys, reduced costs, real time loan disbursements, financing at the point of sale, point of sale could be anywhere. It could be embedded finance. It could be a third party, uh, you know, a broker uh, wherein you have given a, your BNPL journey or a BNPL API which is getting consumed to book the loan or is it an instant credit application updates they are getting back as a part of the standard journey. From the bank end, if we look at this or a financial institution you know you have digital inclusion of all credit stakeholders reduced paperwork to focus on core business completely reducing the turnaround time and enhancing the customer experience and you know Time to market for new products or changes would always be in your hands. So these are some of the numbers that we can look at. You know, loan approval <clears throat> as against seven to three, three to seven days is one day. You know, faster customer customer onboarding, increase uh, tracking and monitoring of loan applications, improve uh, full time employees productivity by fifty percent. These are some of the levers that we have. You know. Uh, seen in these kind of implementations like Al Raji, if I talk about, you know, this is where uh, world's largest Islamic bank by capital based on 2015 uh, data. It's, uh, you know, Saudi Real 330 billion in asset under management and over 600 branches. So we have automated their complete digital lending platform. In retail, we have done mortgage, personal finance, auto finance, credit finance. We have, uh, you know, in SME, we are doing POS, working capital, known against properties. Interestingly, you know, the service request management also has 200 plus services. So they're now focusing, once the sale has happened and the disbursement has happened, how can I further enhance the customer through servicing? You know, so they have automated and made some of the services straight through, for which customers are used to call the uh, bank in the call center and they, it used to take many days now they are doing all this in a GFI in a straight through manner. And early warning signal, that is the uh, application that we have deployed them to see if, uh, you know, a loan is scheduled to miss the, uh, you know, payments and convert into early warning, uh, a delinquent loan, sorry. And if I move ahead, you know, these are some of the key facts. It's a completely branchless loan processing, reduced turnaround times, uh, 30, 2% reduction in regulatory compliance efforts, end-to-end -end process standardization for all the product lines, easy document archival, and you know 30% increase in number of instant approval cases, that is STP loans. This is the great, so just assume that for 30% of the, your, your traffic, you don't even have to go to the back office. Your platform 24 Thanks, by Kaushal. is booking uh, book Thanks, the Kaushal. For Thanks for the... Uh, yeah. interesting insights and covering the case study yeah. Uh, yeah. we are just left with uh, five last five to ten minutes uh, yeah. uh, thanks Chetan for your wonderful insights thanks Kaushal for stitching uh, the insights shared by Chetan I request our audience uh, if they have any questions please go to your 
chat window, questions window, and type in the questions if you have in mind. Meanwhile, I do have a couple of questions with me from the audience. Uh, Chetan, uh, this is for you. Uh, what sure. role do you see AI will play in future in transforming digital lending? So I think one of the first one is uh, the whole experience targeting and personalizing the journey. And the last but not the least is better credit scoring, uh, which today is largely income and static parameter driven. Uh, AI will make it behavioral driven uh, with alternate data and additional inputs, which AI can get, which a human may or may not be able to correlate. Right, so that's the three major things I would say AI will do differently. Thanks, Chetan. Thanks for your wonderful insight. Uh, Kaushal, this question is for you from the audience. Uh, how do you see Nugent solutions adapting to rapidly changing business and technical dynamics in the lending system or lending space? I, I, I think that's a very, very relevant question. And, uh, you know, as I told you, most of the financial institutions were actually struggling with monolithic architectures earlier. And there is a paradigm shift that is happening towards framework or low code framework based approach now, which gives, you know, the underlying agility to always remain future ready and whatever changes that may come. Like, for example, if AI has come in in the last year or so, how easy it is to adopt AI as a part of the service oriented architecture that this low code platform offers to the end customers. Similarly, you know, now we are seeing a lot of, uh, you know, smart contracts getting generated as a part of distributed ledger or blockchain. So all of that is again, you know, a plug into the low code platform. So if, if you see the, the, you know, the, at the helm or at the core of your digital transformation initiatives, if you have the underlying layer, layer as a low code platform, I think you will always remain agile and ahead of the competition. That's the message I wanted to you know, emphasize on. Thanks, Kaushal. That's a wonderful message, a wonderful example for our audience. Uh, uh, I request everyone to uh, go to your questions window uh, if you have any queries. Even if you are not able to ask now, we will anyways be uh, uh, ready to take your questions. Uh, just one last question for Chetan. Uh, what strategy should organizations follow or I would say financial institutions should follow to adapt and keep up to the pace to market dynamics in lending? Very interesting question. So digital lending anyway is much faster than the manual. Uh, what's going towards is instant. Now instant doesn't mean at the end of the screen you get the credit. It means it's much, much faster. It's an STP process. So organizations have to keep achievable goals uh, to modernize the lending process and bring AI at different paces and more and more AI you bring in more and more that will improve and you will come from few days uh, for a smart lending or a personal finance uh, to few hours in an STP case. So you can actually expect the same day credit uh, in up to a capacity. But when you look at business to business or when you look at home finances, instead of having multiple weeks, uh, having it in multiple days uh, would be a very, very good achievement. In that's what practically that you should keep it. Thanks, Chetan. Uh, Kaushal, one last question for you. Uh, okay. Based on your past experience in Middle East region, what are the common challenges and bottlenecks faced during solution implementation? And what is your mitigation strategy? Again, a very, very you know, interesting question if I look at uh, from the practicality purpose. So, you know, if I if I have to pick one, you know, since the time is less, I will uh, pick one thing that I've seen is the most challenging uh, for all the financial institutions is their, you know, data strategy. 
you know, uh, they should start thinking uh, around how the data is to, so whether it's a data warehouse uh, that they have to adopt and to make sure that, you know, uh, they have the relevant data available, the tra traditional data available as a part of their data warehouse engines so that, you know, once they want to adopt AI, it will all leverage the same set of data. Because a model which is running very successfully in one institution might not run as it is in your institution because your data will always be different. Your experiences of customers will be very, very different than any. The factors could be same. But the weights for each variable might change drastically once we recalibrate the model based on your data. So that is one thing that they have to look at. And while moving to the implementation, the second most important thing would be to have the integrations, you know, because any digital lending platform, the experience can only be successful if you have the complete set of integrations which are available via APIs. So, you know, they should think of creating an API gateway where or investing into an enterprise service bus wherein they are able to expose all these things as an API to any platform that might come in and, you know, do the complete transformation for their digital end. These are the two things that we have seen prolonging the delivery timelines and, you know, creating it a struggle for the vendors as well as the banks to take up the, you know, within the given timelines and execute the project within the given timelines. Yeah. Thanks, Kaushal. Uh, with that, uh, as our time approaches, I sincerely thank our esteemed panelists, Chetan and Kaushal, for joining thank us you. today. Uh, I'm sure our audience have a lot to take back when they go back to their whiteboard on making strategies for digital learning using AI. If you still have questions, I repeat, uh, please note our email ID. You may write to us at info at the rate nugensoft.com. If you still have questions and queries, do write to us on info at the rate nugensoft.com. With that, it's time for me to take leave for today. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.